Hey, what is up, Andrew? It is YouTube here. We are back with one of my requests. We all know by now that Josh Freeze, the legendary session king, Josh Freeze, has taken the throne with Foo Fighters. And I'm just looking back actually at my previous Josh Freeze videos. I did him playing Wish live with Nine Inch Nails, and then I did Letting You live with Nine Inch Nails. Josh Freeze, one of my all time favorite drummers. Let's check him out playing Monkey Wrench with the Foo Fighters. You ready? Let's go. Ready? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away. Straight away. I mean, much more on top of the beat than Taylor. Love Taylor. It's not a bag on Taylor, but it's just a different feel, right? This is much more machine-like. Uh, two of my, honestly, all-time favorite drummers, Taylor Hawkins, Josh Freeze. The feel is just so different here. Let's just go back and listen to this again, how metronomic he is when he does accounting, and then it's just like, bam, we are on. We're not mucking around. There's just a, a real intense feeling here. This band is going to have a whole new energy with Josh Freeze on the throne. This is sensational. Do it. <laughs> You can see the reaction from the group. Now, again, you don't want to be comparing Taylor to, to Josh Freeze. They're their own individual people and they've got their own individual unique feel, great world-class feel on the drums. It's hard not to, right? Because it is the Foo Fighters. So you're going to compare a song that's already been recorded and a song that's already been played live many times with how it sounds now. And it is amazing to me how different it sounds here. This is a lesson in drumming. Two amazing drummers, well, three if you count David Grohl, and how they approach and sound on the song. They're all doing the song justice. They're all playing in time. They're all doing the job and absolutely crushing it. It's just, yeah, I mean, Josh Freeze, he is one of the special individuals in the music world. He gets hired for uh, countless albums i had a look at his all music credits the other day and it was about 720 something projects that he's recorded on or with and there is a reason for it there is a reason why he keeps getting hired and you're hearing that now i mean just you just have to learn from this level of player let's keep it going Fire. 
So he's referring to the pump that he's going to get from <laughs> playing these, I guess, what are either cranked up tempos. I'd love to compare this to uh, uh, one of the more recent Monkey Wrench live versions with Taylor on drums. And, you know, what is the BPM difference here? Or is it just intensity? I don't know. But you can tell from the looks on the band that they're like, damn, we are working here, man. Icy hot. You know. Icy hot. Where are my salon pass? <laughs> One last thing before I quit. I never wanted any mother. I could fit into my head. Still remember everything. What you said. Mother shit. Shut out kid. Not with it. That's what did. The best man. Here we go. <laughs> Shane Hawkins speed right there. And that is how good you need to be (laughs) to be able to jump into a world-class level of gig like the Foo Fighters. All right, I'm going to just speak candidly now um, about my true feelings on this. This is probably one of the things I'm most passionate about as a drummer as a drum educator and it's a conversation that I seem to have repetitively with my close drumming friends and it relates to respect respect for the gig respect for your fellow musicians respect for music for the music that you're playing at the moment And respect for the craft of playing music, of playing drums, right? So with uh, two of my uh, good buddies, Dan Clayton and Chris Dawson, fairly recently, might have been last year actually by now, we did a series, a video, I guess, podcast, video cast series on myths. Myths in drumming, myths in music. A couple of times we sort of touched on... People just not knowing, a bit of Dunning-Kruger, people just not understanding or knowing what is required to play that well and also to play in a group like the Foo Fighters. So that horrendous time, you know, around that time where Taylor Hawkins passed away, and all of us fans were just left reeling and, you know, we're saying, what's going to happen to the band? You know, would they would they even replace them? Is the band going to continue? And, the, and you got people coming in with really naive points of view and it really demonstrated a lack of understanding about playing at this level. Such as 
Well, anyone can play in the Foo Fighters. The songs are easy. Another one that popped up was people, and I'm not trying to critique anyone individually here. I think it just overall generally highlighted some massive misconceptions about things, about the reality of things. I play in a Foo Fighters tribute. You know, I could do it again. Another one was, wow, why did they get Josh Freeze? Josh Freeze is one of the best drummers in the world. They could have got anyone. Those songs are easy. They could have got anyone. <laughs> Here is the reality of what would have been the biggest gig in the world at that point. The biggest gig in the world was available. They didn't just get anyone. <laughs> they got the best, I mean, arguably the best rock drummer of all time perhaps the, I mean we're talking in session facility chops feel metronomic time um, just overall facility and ability on the drums one of the greats undoubtedly one of the greats they're not just getting anyone why would they just get anyone they want to put on the best and biggest baddest show that they can right and then that leads you to, well, what is it about Josh Freeze? What is it about him? If you if you accept my first point here, okay. So what is it about him that makes him so good? You know, was there anything in that clip in particular that stood out to you? Again, hit me in the comments if there was something that stood out to you. What's what stands out to me? What hits me like right between the eyes is time. Now, a lot of people confuse metronomic time with good time. Can be, it's part of it. It's also time feel. His feel is so good. Look at the band. Look at the looks on the faces of the people in the band. Wow, this is a new energy. This is different, right? This. If you go and see Foo Fighters at one of their upcoming concerts, they're coming to New Zealand soon. You're hurting all of us when you bring down New Zealand, okay? You're going to see a different energy and excitement in the band because it's new. This is different for them, so it's going to be exciting. And things will feel different. Josh Freeze is not trying to be Taylor Hawkins. And the success of the Foo Fighters drum throne is not defined by how well he can imitate what Taylor Hawkins did or what Dave Grohl did on some of the recordings of these famous songs that we know and love. Josh Freeze is Josh Freeze. He's an artist in his own right. He's been brought in to be Josh Freeze in the Foo Fighters. And, you know, welcome you. You're part of the family now. And we want you to be you. We don't want you to try and be someone else. So that's just another part of it. You can learn so much off Josh Freeze. I mean, you can go through all his recordings and, you know, thousands of them. Uh, have a look at his discography. Actually, I'll put that in the description of the video. It's just frightening how many tracks he's recorded and why he's in such demand why is he in, in such high demand i mentioned the time and i mentioned the time feel sound now again part of the myth bus session that we did was gear oh he must have really great, great gear listen, listen to how good he sounds it's not the gear it's him you could take his snare drum, which in that clip sounds like a sample, because he hits it literally perfectly every single time. You could take that snare and play it. It's not going to sound like that. Because Josh Freeze is playing it, right? Just like your own personal snare, which you might think, oh, okay, well, it sounds right. It just sounds like a snare. Give it to Josh Freeze. It's going to sound like a million dollars because it's the player. It's not the gear. So that's another myth. And... I think small things that I often refer to on the channel, dynamics, subdivision. So dynamics, he did actually surprisingly go right down um, towards the end of the groove there. He brought it right down while they were simmering away and chatting and having a, having a laugh and, and just being <laughs> Foo Fighters, you know, being cool. So he's got all of that. The other thing that happens, like this is, this is basics, it's fundamentals, but it's this is the stuff that sounds good. 99% of us, when we, when we bring that dynamic down to P or, you know, we bring it down to like a really low level, 
we slow down. Similarly, play louder, we speed up. He can play anything he wants, louder or quiet, he's not gonna speed up or slow down because <laughs> he's got that facility. He's got that overall holistic ability to look at the music. What does the music require? He's not in his head thinking, oh, I've got to, got to play on time here. What is the next part? He's He's got it all down. He's a master behind the kit. Subdivisions. Another thing I always bring up on the channel, subdivisions. So when he was going into those epic accented fills in the song, even though he's changing subdivision there, there's no shift in the tempo. So what that gives you is just a smooth transition for the band. You're getting all the benefits of the crescendo into the fill and the change of subdivision and all that excitement and you just sail right on through. So again, an inexperienced drummer is gonna be trying to achieve all that, but the tempo is gonna be up and down, and then there's gonna be a tempo correction when you get into the next part, because you would have invariably sped up in the fill. All of this takes away from the intensity and the tension and what you've tried to create with the fill. Why do we even have a fill? To create excitement, perhaps, to signify a change in section to take us into the chorus or take us back into the verse it's not there as just look, look at me i'm playing drums and i'm hitting them all the toms now look how cool that is no it's it's music right you, it needs to be musically appropriate and it doesn't really need to draw attention to itself the music needs to draw attention to itself the music is the feature here not the drums but yeah, there is just so much to be excited about here. I'm excited That's what she said. about this. I'm excited for the Foo Fighters because they've got this dynamite drummer and I feel like there's just going to be a new lease of life, a new energy for the group. And I'm just so happy. I think I called this at the time I said, you know, Josh Freese, you can go back to my videos at the, uh, un again, unfortunate time of uh, Taylor's passing. And I think I said, well, you know, if they get someone, I think Josh Freese would be amazing. You know, like he is a showman. He's experienced. He's not going to be overawed with the gig. He's just going to crush it. And you know Josh is going to crush it. And, you know, he wouldn't have even been in the conversation to take the throne if he wasn't going to crush it. It's just, there's no doubt, right? I mean, and finally, I guess it just leaves me thinking part of the Foo's live act was always Dave jumping on a drum kit as well, perhaps having a battle, <laughs> banter back and forth with uh, Taylor. Imagine the drum battles now. <laughs> You're battling a pretty... Pretty heavy hitter and Josh Freeze. And uh, anyway, I'm just excited about where all this is going and I cannot wait to see Foo Fighters live myself. Guys, I hope you dug this video. Please do hit me with a subscribe, a like, and leave a comment down below with what you thought of this video. What are your impressions? What, what, how are you feeling about Josh Freeze taking the throne and hearing him actually with the band and how he fit in? Finally, remember you guys, as a subscriber of my channel, get access to a full and free 30-day trial over at Drumeo. Go have a look. I believe they've got every single Foo Fighters song ever recorded, transcribed, note for note. You can go into the song sections there and uh, just download them as a PDF form, or you can use the player to slow down loop sections. It is quite phenomenal. So yeah, 30 days is plenty of time to go raid the transcriptions there and learn a whole bunch of Foo Fighters songs. Along with that, some of the best drum coaches in the world, some incredible courses, all very cleverly laid out. Yeah, you won't be disappointed. Guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, keep chopping wood. Ciao.